we are going to take a deep dive into, let me get rid of um, something on screen. Okay. We're going to do a deep dive into food nutrition and plant-based eating. Uh, and don't let that scare you if that's not who you are or what you are. Um, I hope that you'll feel more inspired that way by the end of it. See, I didn't say I hope you won't be interested at all because I hope you'll be very interested because that's the point of what we're doing today. And that is looking at the benefits of more plant-based foods in your diet. Lifestyle interventions, I just mentioned, I'm part of the College of Lifestyle Medicine, working as a health coach with a lifestyle medical doctor and founder of one of the founders of the College of Lifestyle Medicine and past president, Dr. Wayne Dysinger. And the College of Lifestyle Medicine has outlined their pillars as six things, food and risky substances, and we just put all that together in food, risky substances being addictive substances and things that you can either eat, smoke, drink, take that are not good for your body. Um, movement represented by the couple running, sleep. And that is, um, we'll, we'll be talking about that next week, stress management. And we put stress management and sleep together. And that's why ours is four now because we've consolidated risky substances and food and then sleep and stress management. And then finally, community. Some people would think, oh, well, that's, that's something different, something other than what I have to focus on for health, not at all. And you'll hear more about that next week uh, when we talk about it. Uh, did you notice what I was wearing today? <laughs> My celebration of this subject is this same outfit, even same jeans. Um, Aging Powerfully was the book I wrote Going up to my 70th birthday, began at six months before I turned 70, got it published in time to celebrate it at my 70th birthday. And it's a bit of a memoir. There are things that's funny because one of my best friends, best, best, best friends ever, um, but I haven't seen her in years because we, we moved away and our lives changed. But uh, Rika um, knew me for probably a decade before we moved away and we raised babies together, she didn't know what was written in this book. And that's why I put accept your past, take control of your future, because I was shackled, and it's a good word for what happens when we are in this way, shackled by an eating disorder from the time I was 14 until I was in my 50s. Um, and I had to learn to accept that because that is in the past and has been now solidly in the past for five years. But so there's a bit of memoir there. It, there's a story there. But the whole point was, and the reason I wrote the book was being in a, the, the, um, the, the influence of the College of Lifestyle Medicine being with a clinic where I saw remarkable recovery when people made lifestyle choices. I knew there had to be something written about that. And I, I dedicate, even in that book, the rest of my life to passing on that word um, and finding vibrant health, balance, and joy is what I promise based on the recommendations I give. In that book, the word powerfully is an acronym, 10 lifestyle modalities that you can adopt to give you, again, more vibrant health, balance, and joy. The sunflower you'll see in my, uh, most things I do, there'll be a sunflower somewhere because that is my soul flower. It, it follows the sun. In other words, it finds light anywhere, even in darkness. It's tough as nails. It can grow in the most dire circumstances and still stand strong. And it, makes people smile. All right, Hippocrates about 2,300 years ago wrote, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. This is what we're talking about today. And aging powerfully with Nan is how you probably found me to register for this because that's my Gmail address, agingpowerfullywithnan at gmail.com. And, um, it's also my Facebook and Instagram uh, name. Our bodies are gardens to which our wills are gardeners. Now I spent 
20 years as a landscape designer. And that's my other passion. And that was another skill that I had. But I changed that when I decided to become a health coach to bringing my design skills from the outside in. Now we're designing gardens and lifestyles. This is Brenda Davis. You're going to um, hear from her uh, all the way through this slide presentation until we get to the food part, because this was a presentation, Eating for Life, Designing an Optimal Garden by Brenda Davis. And I'm using her slide, um, the, her, her slide deck, um, not everything, but a lot of what she presented to us. And if you can see me, I'm holding up one of my favorite cookbooks, the Kick Diabetes Cookbook. And I don't have diabetes, but I love the recipes in here. And I can prevent diabetes hands down by understanding the precepts in it. She also wrote this book, Becoming Vegan. Vegan is a philosophical decision. It has to do with what we believe. It doesn't guarantee health. You've heard me say this before. Being vegan simply means you don't eat meat. Somebody who is vegan could go to McDonald's and get a Coke, get French fries, get a hamburger where they just toss out the cheese and meat and think they're getting a decent meal. And there's nothing decent about that. So vegan doesn't mean healthy. Whole food plant-based is more specific about what we're talking about when I say either vegan or I say whole food plant-based. Okay, take it away, Brenda. Essential elements of optimal eating will, the value of optimal eating will maximize your health and well-being, minimize risk of chronic disease, meet the needs of essential nutrients, satisfy, be, be satisfying, appealing, and acceptable, and be ecologically sustainable and ethically justifiable. The blue zones, you'll hear us talk about the blue zones, you'll hear national a conversation, international conversation about the Blue Zones, because Dan Butner for um, the National Geographic was hired as a, like an archaeologist, not archaeologist, like a, um, a, a, to find, I'll just get into what they hired him to do, areas in the world where people lived well the longest, and he came up with, and he used a, a lot of criteria that was very specific. He came up with five recognized blue zones and they were communities of people that lived the longest and lived well. Okinawa, Japan, Sardinia, Italy, the Seventh-day Adventist community of Loma Linda, California, which happens to be about 15 minutes from my home, Icaria, Greece, and the Nicoya Peninsula of Costa Rica. The commonalities of these five zones can be looked at in a simple, I'll, I'll say, graphic of three of them, Okinawa, Loma Linda, Sardinia. They all have their strengths. They, for example, in Loma Linda, they eat a lot of nuts, have healthy social groups. In Okinawa, they lived um, calmer lives. Uh, they were likable people. Their food of strength was turmeric in Sardinia, the, the fava beans, po high polyphenols. Polyphenols, by the way, you'll hear us use this word, are chemicals in foods. It's funny because drug manufacturers will pull out and then synthesize polyphenols. Well, we don't have to do that. We can get that from our food. And when they talk about wine, this I think this is a, a sentence, polyphenol wine. I'll leave it as polyphenols in wine. But their wine is made with a high polyphenol grape in a way that is very um, clean. Our wine, people say, well, then I'll just drink wine, a lot of wine, that'll keep me healthy. Our wine is full of chemicals because most of our grapes that are used for wine are not organic. They're heavily sprayed. And so... Drinking wine isn't what some people think it is a, a, um, an elixir, that's not so. So the commonalities 
are that they eat whole grains, they eat whole beans. They um, are not culturally, um, they're culturally isolated from, I'll say the kinds of influences that we have, even though Loma Linda isn't, because Loma Linda is in the middle of city, our cities with the influences of all of the, um, the easy to grab industrialized and fast foods but because of their beliefs, they forego a lot of that. And what do they have in common? Family and social engagement, constant moderate physical activity, no smoking, and plant-based diet based on most of the protein coming from grains and legumes. Um, Marion Nissenau, uh, represented the Department of Health and Human S Services, as well as taught at NYU Nutrition. She is internationally recognized as a nutrition expert, and she came, her, her beliefs came down to this sentence. There's no question that a largely vegetarian diet is healthy and as you can get. The evidence is so strong and overwhelming, and produced over such a long period of time that it's no longer debatable. The problem is, and Marianne Nissenau and a lot of us will acknowledge this, the problem is that the financial forces are against this reality. It doesn't make anybody money. If people are eating mostly plants, <laughs> they're not getting the food industry rich, the animal agriculture industry rich, or pharmaceuticals, or I'm sorry about this too, the doctors and surgeons. The typical diet should be primarily predominantly plants. 95% of the calories should be from vegetables, fruits, whole grains, legumes, seeds, and nuts, up to, if you must, 5% of the calories from meat products or fish or dairy or eggs. Problem with fish is our oceans are so polluted with plastics and um, chemicals. Our meats, dairies and eggs are so influenced by the hormones the animals are given and the antibiotics. And if we stick with just organic meats, our planet can sustain that. Well, that's not true. If you stick with, well, yes, it is. It's true because we are changing our natural habitats into vast animal farms that our planet cannot sustain. So in a nutshell, I would say, get this number as high as you can. But if you can't do that, then at least keep it at a lower number. I am 100% and going on five years whole food, plant-based. Beautiful. You don't see meats decorating a, um, a, a, a plate or a graphic like this. This is me after one of my shopping trips to a local farm store. We are so blessed to have farm stores in Southern California that can produce year round. Well, the one that's near me, it's we go to it every Sunday is oh maybe 15 minutes from me we go to and I'll show you what we get at another slide but we go every Sunday to our favorite vegan restaurant we have this wonderful meal and then we stop at the farm store and this was one day's uh, load from them uh, just yummy and we will eat that if I buy it I never waste food if I buy it I must eat it. <laughs> so all week long, we have reasons to use it. I think it was a windy day when I look at my hair, but I guess if I look at it today, it looks just like that. So never mind. <laughs> Aim for 10 plus servings of colorful vegetables and fruits each day. If that sounds daunting, think of it this way. You want to get berries in every day because you get a lot of the anthocyanins, in other words, plant chemicals from the blueberries, you get the fiber from the berries and berries are showing, shown to be some of the highest nutrient valued fruits. So you wanna get in berries, you wanna get in at least one or two other servings of fruits every day. You then wanna get in greens, so a couple servings of greens, do it for lunch, do it for dinner. You wanna get in some, um, 
uh, maybe you've got to get in your starch. So you add some potatoes to that, um, uh, the tubers, and you want to get in a cruciferous vegetable, which is the broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, um, uh, kale, uh, Brussels sprouts group. So in other words, when you start thinking of what you want to get in every day, 10 servings, and sometimes a serving can be a quarter of a cup, is not hard to do. If you don't eat fruits and vegetables, don't let it overwhelm you. Just start with something. And if you don't eat fruits and vegetables, I bet you don't like them very much. <laughs> and the reason I say that is that if you have found yourself, I'm going to use the word addicted because the manufacturers, food manufacturers know exactly what they're doing. They hit your sweet spot. They, they test this on MRIs. I'm not making this up. Uh, they find the sweet spot of their manufactured foods as it relates to sugar, oil, and salt. And the fast foods and restaurant foods and packaged foods will grab you in such a way that you feel like you can't stop eating it. They are so easy to like because again, they ping our, um, our dopamine and, and um, pleasure spots. They are so easy to like that the more you eat them, the more those intense salt, oil, sugar combination flavors make you dislike real food because real food is boring. An apple fritter compared to an apple. If you eat a lot of apple fritters, you're not going to touch an apple. It's boring. Okay, enough of that. Use lots of herbs and spices. That matters. Chop up cilantro and throw it on things unless you hate cilantro. You know, some people are genetically... Um, predisposed to dislike cilantro because it tastes terrible to them. But every chance you get to eat any kind of spice or herb, um, eat them, put them in everything because they are so flavorful because their phytonutrients and polyphenols that I spoke of earlier are condensed into these tiny little bits of food that you can use just a tablespoon or more of or a teaspoon or a half a teaspoon and they are they fight inflammation beautifully include every day if you can some people are allergic not allergic but some people don't tolerate legumes i'll bet you it's because you don't eat them now that's not always the case some people are very sensitive to certain legumes. One of them is Chef AJ. If she has, if any of you are familiar with whole food, plant-based eating, vegan diets, you'll know who Chef AJ is. She is now up to 1,400 interviews that she has with people who are of interest to those of us who believe in the value of whole food, plant-based. She's she began those at the beginning of COVID, March 20th, 2020, and she has already interviewed, not already, she has interviewed the enormous number of 1,400. She can't have legumes. She eats grains and fruits and vegetables and um, tubers and is phenomenally healthy. So, but the easiest way to get your, the protein foods with masses of fiber is through legumes and they are highly nourishing and all of the blue zones rely on legumes. Um, what's the good on grains or the goods on grains? Grains are great because they're full of fiber, B vitamins, trace minerals. Um, however, look at first vegetables, fruits, legumes, and seeds and nuts, um, and then fill in the rest with the grains seeds and nuts, at least a tablespoon or three tablespoons, I was going to say a handful a day. I do that. If you are, if you have found yourself over your ideal weight and you are determined to lose weight, this is one of the categories of food. You'll see what I mean when we talk about caloric density that you have to watch out for because these are your most calorically dense foods next to oil on the planet. And when we talk about seeds and nuts, we're not talking roasted salted because 
the value of the seeds and nuts are their healthy fats and those fats oxidize when they're roasted. So we're talking raw nuts and seeds and we're talking um, unsalted. When you salt something, you can eat two, three, four times as much of it. Remember the salt, oil, sugar of the, the um, food industry, knowing what to do with that. If you, here's a good story. Tim and I always have a little bowl of mixed nuts, the Brazil nuts and cashew and especially walnuts and um, uh, almonds and uh, pistachios. If I've gotten from Costco the pistachio nuts that are already shelled, but those are roasted and salted. If we put that in our nut bowl, we can't stop eating them. Our other nuts, we have no problem with keeping it down to a handful. If Tim has lost weight that he doesn't mean to lose, yes, that happens So the whole food plant-based diet. Tim is my husband of 10 years. I was married for 40 years. And, and that was the husband that my friend that I was speaking of at the beginning knew. That was Bob and he passed away of esophageal cancer 12, oh gosh, 13 years ago now. Um, I remarried, uh, what a blessing. And I've been married to Tim for 10 years. And he is whole food plant-based right along with me. He has a story about that. I won't take the time unless we have time later. Um, but he is absolutely determined to keep very, very clean and away from animal products because of what he knows they do in terms of tumor growth. And um, sometimes he'll lose more than he means to. And he'll throw in more nuts. That's what we do. And if I gain a pound or two, and I know a pound or two can lead to three or four or four or five, I cut back on the seeds and nuts and I cut back on the avocado, whereas Tim has a giant avocado every day for lunch. Okay, nutrient dense foods. If you're gonna eat it, get the most out of every calorie you eat because your body deserves it. And you're gonna see some information later that might make it easier for you to make these decisions because you'll think about that information, but we'll go to that later. Select foods that contribute to your health rather than undermine it. If you're gonna put it in your mouth, think to yourself very clearly, is this gonna serve my body or is this going to hurt my body? In other words, it's like looking at a fire in your house, a little teeny fire you could put out and thinking, hmm, do I throw on water or should I put some kerosene on it? Same analogy. What are phytonutrients, antioxidants, polyphenols, <laughs> phytochemicals? It's what plants have in them, either as an element, a natural element, and quite often the polyphenols are the things that the plant has developed to protect itself. But what it does, what it protects itself from, let's say, bugs or, or, or um, any other adverse situation is actually what our body loves because it builds our strength from learning to deal with those. And when we talk to you about eating plant-based, we talk to you about the colors of the rainbow. There was a 10-year study called the American Gut Project. We'll talk about the microbiome later that has everything to do with it. But one of their end declarations is we can't stress strongly enough variety and that you want to eat the colors of the rainbow. I have a better chart than this, but it's not as easy to read or understand. So I'm not going to put it out. But the reason I say it's better is that this other chart, when it gets to the value of what it is you get from those foods of any given color. It has a longer list, much longer list of the, the, um, the benefits from that food. For example, red, where do you find it? For example, tomatoes, watermelon, and some other red products like red bell peppers. What do you get out of that lycopene? Well, there's five, six, eight, 10 other things you get out of it. What does that lycopene do? Antioxidants, cuts prostate cancer, just, or prostate, just as an example. What about the orange, um, orange color, carrots and yams and sweet potatoes and mango and pumpkin, beta carotenes, what do they do? Antioxidant, what about yellow and um, orange color? 
citrus fruits and grapefruit and papaya and peaches. What do they do? Vitamin C, flavonoids. What does that do? Great for cell growth and helps detox um, uh, harmful substances. Greens, spinach, kale, collard, all greens. We get folate. You're going to hear folate later in this. We want folate in our bodies. Well, there's, oh, again, untold numbers of uh, the things that are found in the greens. The green whites like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, the things we think there's no color. They have no value. Not true. Indolens, lutein helps eliminate excess estrogen and carcinogens. Our food does all of these remarkable things. And again, I'll be redundant more. Um, white foods, you might think that the white foods like the cabbage, I'm sorry, the onions and garlic and chives and asparagus, those white greens are not valuable. Well, they have certain sulfates that destroy cancer cells and reduce the cell division um, and help uh, those that cancer cell cell division and help stimulate our immune systems. Blues, that's where you get the anthocyanins. Cabbage, I'm going to use that as an example. You'll see purple cabbage, you'll see white cabbage. They both are cabbage, but they both also count differently in terms of what you're getting out of them. So again, eat the colors of the rainbow, even if it's similar foods, red peppers, red bell peppers, green bell peppers, orange bell peppers, yellow, they're all different in terms of some of what they're offering. The purple reds like grapes, berries, we've got resveratrol. Don't have to drink your wine, you can eat the food. And then even brown, the grains and the legumes, fiber and carcinogen removal. I'm going to recommend, because this will be a recorded uh, uh, talk that you can find on my YouTube channel, YouTube Nan Simonson. I know I'm repetitive, but in case anyone just came in. And you can screenshot some of this so that you've got it to look at to remind yourself when you have a chance, get every color you can in during the day on a weekly basis. Uh, carbohydrates. I went through decades and it began in the 70s it began before that fearing carbohydrates remember atkins don't eat carbohydrates well carbohydrates are plant foods the cellulose that makes a plant a plant is a carbohydrate they're not our enemy the blue zones eat 50 80 percent my diet is probably 70 to 75 percent whole food carbohydrates now it probably is what allowed me, not probably, I know it is, what allowed me when I transitioned to leave behind my obsession with food and my eating disorder because I could stay satisfied there, satiating. Carbohydrates are nature's appetite suppressant and antidepressant, and I believe that. Um, and it's heavenly to be able to have starches that, are satis that satisfy and satiate and that's your whole food carbohydrates. So carbohydrates from whole food are consistently protective. Refined carbohydrates, on the other hand, <laughs> really bad news. Can you identify these things? Do you have them in your cupboard? Possibly, yes. I have a friend who's gone whole food plant-based. The problem is I just saw her recently eating from a bag of pretzels. That's not the end of the world, but is that a whole food? Heck no. Are, are French fries a whole food? They're even worse because they're fried, but no, they're a potato that's been ground up and tortured. What about crackers? Most crackers, most noodle products like Top Ramen, my grandson goes to the ball games and they give him these ramen cups and I just want to, well, I want to rip it out of his hand and hand him an apple, but it won't work. Um, they already think I'm a little bit um, obsessed, and I am. Pasta. Now, is pasta terrible? Well, a lot of pastas are. They're ground up grains, all the good stuff thrown away, so it can last on a shelf forever. And then you boil them in water. Instead, if you get whole grain pastas, that makes the difference. And that leads me to what I want to say about all of anything that is refined. There's... Um, there's processed and ultra processed. Now, processed 
can still leave you with an idea of what it is you're eating. Um, like maybe a potato chip is, the, the ingredients are oil in a potato. You kind of know what you're eating, but there are a lot of, but it's still highly processed because of the fat, sugar. Yes, they add sugar to potato chips. They add it to everything. And, um, and the salt, which again, makes it so palatable. You don't want to stop. But I want to recommend you look at your boxes. Take some time, go to your cupboards. I have so many people in my life that buy what they think are very healthy things for themselves and their children. It's natural. It's, it's um, uh, vegetable-based, like vegetable-based chips. And if you look at them, if you look at the ingredients, the first line will be either oil or there will be a lot of salt or there'll be a lot of sugar. You want to get something that starts with whole and then the word, for example, your pasta, whole grain um, wheat. I can't have wheat because of the gluten, but there's nothing wrong with wheat. Whole grain rice, um, lentils, and a little bit of salt. That's an okay pasta because when you cook it, you're really getting just um, dehydrated and then rehydrated lentils and the value of those foods. I'll, I'll leave that alone, but if we become label readers, we will become a lot more discerning because one of the most frightening places to me <laughs> as it relates to all of this is Costco. I see carts loaded with processed foods that looked like they were something people should be eating. But if people looked at labels, they would put them right back on the shelves as I do almost everything that's packaged because they're way too high in fat or they have any fat and I'll, or oils. And I'll, I'll show you why that's problematic later. Okay. Um, diets rich in refined carbohydrates promote overeating. If you eat some, there's a book called The Pleasure Trap by Doug Lyle and Alan Goldhammer, both um, uh, doctors. And it defines what happens when the food manufacturers put together these highly palatable foods and why it's very hard to stop. It's because we truly do become addicted to them. We get our dopamine and um, neurotransmitters get pinged. They want that feeling again. And um, we quite often find it very difficult to stop. If we don't simply crowd those out with foods that we can neuroadapt to fall in love with, it's very hard not to every year find yourself heavier and heavier every year. Adversely, it affects blood lipids, meaning your cholesterol and therefore your cardiovascular system, your insulin and therefore your predisposition to diabetes, the risk of GI diseases, including cancers, the uh, increase of fat in your liver, the non alcohol fatty liver increases inflammation and almost all chronic disease is inflammation based. Almost every one. If we cut inflammation, we can cut out a lot of our disease, but these are highly inflammatory foods and they impair immunity. This is a snapshot of the way Americans and westernized cultures live. 63% of our calories come from processed foods based on everything I've just told you. Is it not, is it surprising that when you look around you, we are getting sicker as a nation. We are getting heavier. We're getting more chronic diseases and more people you know are getting sicker earlier and taking more pills longer. Plant foods at 12%, that's not even a true measure because a lot of that, at least half of that 12% of a diet being from the plant foods that I'm going on and on about, and I'm not nearly done yet, uh, are processed. For example, the asparagus and cream of asparagus soup. You might as well not eat it. The, again, potatoes in French fries, the tomatoes in ketchup, which are loaded with high fructose corn syrup, which totally destroys our, our ability to deal with um, 
uh, insulin regulation. So we are pitifully low in plant products in our diet, about 25% uh, animal products. And probably there are people who eat far, far more than that because every meal in some cases is an animal product between eggs and dairy, and which includes cheeses and yogurts. And then the different kinds of meats aren't fish better, Nan, not from toxic oceans that have been overfished and that are full of plastics and chemicals. Um, as much as a wild salmon would be fine once in a while, even those are problematic because almost all salmon you get anywhere is going to be farmed. They call it Alaskan salmon and farmed salmon is almost poison. Okay, how do you really feel, Nan? <laughs> I just told you. So eat less, eat fewer of the animal products, eat more of the whole foods. And when you're making decisions as to what to eat, look at that category. All right, caloric density. This is something, this chart is from Jeff Novick. Uh, Chef AJ has something similar that makes it easier. This would be a good screenshot for you. That would be easier for you to make decisions. All right. I don't count calories. I don't even think of it. And yet when I went plant-based, I didn't need to lose a lot of weight, but I still went down. Oh, probably I'm about four or five pounds less than when I began. And it stays that way. And I'm getting older. I'm not putting on that pound every year or three pounds every year or five pounds every year. And yet I'm getting healthier as the time is going on because I pretty well stick to this understanding. I stay in the green. The green is left of 600 calories. I stay away from quantities of the yellows and the reds. What's not in here that could have been at 700 calories a pound. This is food per pound. At 700, we would have avocado. So my husband has avocado, high in, in healthy fats, high in fiber, really high in fiber. Um, but 700 calories a pound. I can't afford to be eating 700 calories a pound. He can handle that. So he has his avocado every day. What about, um, and this, the processed carbohydrates are 1400 a pound, animal products, mainly a thousand a pound, unless you're getting into the really good expensive meats where they're so marbled that you're getting much higher caloric density. Junk foods, 2300 calories a pound for almost any junk food, including crackers. Um, nuts and seeds, this is why you have to be careful, 2,800 calories a pound, but at an ounce or two a day, you can do that, but you can see why cutting that could very easily cut out thousands of calories in a month and therefore pounds. And this is the nemesis, that oil, oil and fat, added oil and fat. And again, you'll have other reasons to avoid those besides calories. But what's the point of paying attention to this? Well, if you're eating at 600 calories or less per pound, you're eating maybe a half a cup, a cup of legumes a day. The rest of it is a mix of the unprocessed CC, which is carbohydrate, your um, tubers, meaning potatoes, they're like 350, the fruits, the vegetables. Your combination gives you the ability to eat pounds of food. In other words, to be fully satisfied, full at every meal. You have enough starch that you're not craving. Um, you're getting delicious flavors. You're getting healthier every day, which helps your neurotransmitters, your metabolism, as well as your blood sugar regulation. And you're getting healthier because of the nutritional makeup of those foods. The ones on the left are sorry, the ones on the right, in other words, yellow and red, are far less nutritionally beneficial. Okay. When somebody adopts whole food plant-based diet, in many cases, the changes can be spectacular. And these aren't just widened <laughs> um, uh, photos of the same person. In other words, um, uh, just changing the perspective of the photo. These are real people. Maintain a healthy body weight. You can do that with movement, yes, but primarily with food. And it's easiest, I find, with whole food. I don't find it. It's, it's actually stated by the College of Lifestyle Medicine. 
with whole foods that are plant-based. So the benefits of whole food plant-based, do I need to keep talking? One of them I haven't talked about is the microbiome. What is the microbiome? All right. In our gut, even though it's everywhere, it's in all of our, it's in our nose, our mouth, our skin, we have microbes, a microbiome that we were born with. And that's one of the reasons now that they understand that when a baby comes through the birth canal naturally, they have a film that is setting up their microbiome that now knowing that if a baby is born C-section, they will swab that baby with the secretions of its birth because that's where the microbiome is and it sets that microbiome up for health. We want a diverse microbiome. So what is it? It's three to five pounds of bugs, microbes, um, bacteria, archaea, fungus, yeasts, all of those preferably beneficial that live in a gut, our gut, as I said, weigh about three to five pounds and regulate everything. There is one thing, and this is the most important part of fiber, even though I don't know if it's written that way on any of the slides. There is one thing that those bacteria eat, and that's fiber, nothing else. How much fiber is in animal product? Zero. Where do you get your fiber? Only plants. So increased biodiversity, those bugs, we want the better bugs, not the worst bugs. SCFA is short chain fatty acids. Those bacteria have a byproduct and that byproduct is short chain fatty acids. Short chain fatty acids are used by every system in our body to regulate those systems. Our lungs, our brain, our uh, cardiovascular system, our gut and the health of our intestines, all of that short chain fatty acids affect. And again, they're a product of this bacteria and we want the better bacteria. It suppresses bad bacteria like salmonella. It increases good bacteria like the bifidobacterium lactobacillus and helps regulate combinations. The bacterioides and the firmicutes gives them a good ratio. In other words, this is a bunch of gibberish, but what it's saying is our microbiome can either go I'll use a scientific term, totally wonky, or it can be in great shape depending on what we feed it. Plant protein reduces pathogenic bacteria, increases the short chain fatty acids, and our plant fats, not oils, but plant fats coming from where? Nuts, seeds, avocados, um, are, have a positive effect on the microbiome. So if you hear your gut bugs, if you hear microbiome, that's what we're talking about. What benefits our gut flora? Um, or what are the benefits of a healthy uh, gut flora? Basically what we've talked about, nutrient absorption of, of not only vitamins, but also amino acids um, and um, releasing the energy and the short chain fatty acids and I've talked about that, protect against pathogens, help you maintain a good body weight. A healthy gut flora, a healthy microbiome actually is represented usually by weight management, easy weight management, boosts immunity, reduces inflammation, maintains the integrity of the gut wall and supports brain function. The microbiome is where 70 to 80 percent of your um, your uh, the brain regulating neurotransmitters are made. And with a gut that's off kilter, personalities can be changed. Depression can come in. Um, anxiety can flourish. All of that from a microbiome. Who would have thought? Uh, improving gut flora with, with um, dietary strategies. I'll just sum this up by eating plant foods and include in them fermented foods. They have found fermented foods like sauerkraut, tempeh, miso. Do you know, even some pickles, if you get pickles that are not in a jar on a shelf, but you get them, for example, 
Trader Joe's. I'm just minutes from a Trader Joe's, so I shop there a lot and I like their prices and I like the fact that they really have a lot of organic foods. Well, they have pickles in the refrigerator section that actually have live culture in them. What a great way to get a fermented food, have a slice of, of pickle. Burpees is another one of the brands that has refrigerated pickles because they are in a fermentation process, not um, not boiled to then be able to have shelf life in a jar. Um, minimize the intake of the bad bacteria from processed, fried foods, refined carbohydrates, and meats. Again, another reason to cut those back or eliminate. Take probiotics, which they have found are not necessary if you're eating whole food plant-based and avoid excessive or all, up to you, alcohol consumption. The benefits of fiber promotes regularity and most people think of fiber as that, the orange stuff grandma used to take to stay regular. That isn't what we're talking about. We're talking about fiber from whole foods improves the gut flora. We now know what that means. Does not only increase satiety, but reduces cravings. And that's absolutely so. Reduces cholesterol levels, slows digestion, stabilizes blood sugar, and keeps you feeling, feeling full. Some people cannot go from meal to meal without having snacks. If you have a whole food plant-based meal, that has sufficient amount of good carbohydrates as well as variety, it will stabilize your blood sugar to the degree that many of you, I know I do, will go meal to meal for five hours between meals or longer without feeling hungry. And that's, that's wonderful, as opposed to what I used to feel through most of my life, which were surges in energy and then deep troughs of, um, of I'll say low blood sugar, shakiness, gutty, gutty, gutty. And then it would fly up again because the food, food choices just made that happen. And it is, um, it's, well, it's overeating in a bottle basically because you just feel so starved. Uh, reduces risk of colorectal cancer, reduces risk of GI disorders, immune function is enhanced and hormone balances are lessened. Do you know that the fiber in your colon helps push out the excess estrogens and the um, toxins? We want that movement and we want it daily or several times a day because it's not meant to sit in our colons. All right. Uh, protein. What is the story? Or, I'm sorry. Fiber. What is the story there? Most of us get, no, most of non-plant-based people get less than 15 grams a day minimum. We should be getting 25 as women, 38 as men, but ideally at least 35 to 50. Our paleo ancestors got 70 to 150. And when people say, well, I'm eating a paleo diet and they're avoiding grains and legumes and tubers, there was no way they really are eating what the Paleolithic people ate because they were primarily whole food plant-based and survived colds and winters and I mean cold weather in the winter and starvation with the addition of the highly calorically dense meats that they would get or insects any way they could. All right, so aim for at least 10 to 15 grams of fiber per meal. You can make a game of this and just go to um, Google and print up lists of high fiber um, plant foods and look at the fibers in different fruits. Legumes, you'll get the highest. Grains, you'll get a lot. Tubers, you'll get some. Um, actually, fruits and vegetables, everything you eat that's a plant food has fiber. It just depends on what it is to get the most, and you'll find that the legumes have the most. Get picky about protein. Yes, meats and fish and all of that have a high quality protein, but they're not the only sources and they are not the preferred source by our body. Animal protein versus plant protein. Boy, don't get me started. <laughs> just look at the arrows. Pro inflammatory plant proteins higher cholesterol, 
no antioxidants, no phytonutrients, no fiber, leading to dysbiosis, which means an unhappy gut, endotoxins. They have hydrocarbon, uh, hydrocarbon amines, this TMAO, IGF-1, uh, Neuro5GC, all of those are bad guys for our body. Inter intermyocellular lipids, that's what has been pinpointed as the, the um, leader um, in diabetes, not carbohydrates, not sugars. It's the fats that get into our muscle intermyocellular lipid is a fat. They clog up the cells in our muscles and don't let the insulin um, allow the glucose to get in. Um, that is, in other words, pre-diabetic um, tendencies, insulin resistance, and that leads to that. Um, advanced glycogen. Wait, uh, advanced glycotic end products, AGEs, are what happen when you cook meats at high temperatures. Those are carcinogenic. Um, and they have pesticides, herbicides, dioxins, heavy metals, antibiotics, hormones, and are acidic to our body. In other words, they increase disease, they don't prevent it. Just the opposite, and I'll just leave it at that, with plant proteins. They are anti-inflammatory. They have the opposite uh, effect of um, animal proteins and they are, they alkaline our body. And in a nutshell, they prevent, treat and reverse disease. Again, if you do a screenshot of this, this is something that you could have up that will remind you of why your choices in terms of plant foods make so much more sense than animal foods. <laughs> this little guy's asking this big old gorilla, gorilla um, where do you get your protein? Are you getting enough protein? Well, heck yes. This is Nimai Delgado. This gentleman, he's a bodybuilder. This was probably taken 10 years ago. He is so famous as a, and not only because he is a bodybuilder who is very successful, but he's also an advocate for whole food plant-based because he has never eaten meat. He's been a vegan since the day he was born. It hasn't hurt him one bit. This was me when I turned 70. I'd never in my life run. I was, what, a year into whole food plant-based, decided I'd run a 10K, that's 6.2 miles, signed up for a race. I ran it. I was um, third fastest in the group. and. This was, that was October, whoops, that was October of, what would that be, 2021, October of 2022, I decided to do a half marathon. I was number two in my group. Well, that's because there was hardly anybody in my group at 70, uh, just about to turn 72 and 14 miles. Okay, so yes, on nothing but plants, we can be stronger and better than ever. Protein from plants, protein-rich plant foods have some advantages over protein-rich animal foods. And that is, and again, this is another uh, slide you may want to keep, the phytochemicals, phytonutrients, steroids, iron, zinc, calcium, potassium, fiber, um, good fats that are not saturated, meaning cholesterol-free, free of the things that hurt our body, full of the things that... Um, benefit our body. How much protein do we need? The World Health Organization says 10 to 15% of calories are daily calories from protein. The RDA in the US is 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. For vegans, for um, that has been upped a bit to 0.9. I'm just going to say round that up because if you can read the small light print, it needs to be higher for children, seniors, and some athletes. I round that up to one gram per kilogram. Now, a kilogram is 2.2 pounds. So you take your weight. For example, I'm 115. I multiply that by 2.2, and that's 52. And that tells me I need 52 grams of protein a day, and I'm getting all I need. Now, will that happen 
if I'm eating plant-based willy-nilly. I was with a group um, running a support group yesterday at the office, and we were talking about that. And people were saying, and every one of you will say the same thing. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes I just get carried away with the sugars or the processed foods or the, the you know, I'm not doing um, what I mean to do. And, you know, uh, it's, it's, it is what it is. No, if we're whole food plant-based and if you ate a, an omnivore diet, I'd say, no, you still have to. Now, omnivores may get all the protein they need. No, I take it back. They get more protein they need than they need. And that leads to rampant cell growth and the, the um, prolifer pro proliferation of cell growth that leads to cancers. That was one of the reasons that my husband went instantly to whole food plant-based because he developed a brain tumor that actually a pituitary adenoma uh, that was growing every year from his surgery date until he went plant-based. There was no reason it wouldn't keep growing, never grew again, because we know from Dr. T. Colin Campbell's research that proteins from animals help proliferate cell growth. They can turn on and turn off cancer based on protein amount. So I'll leave it at that. And that is an easy way to figure that is just bring that up to one gram per kilogram, divide your weight by 2.2 .2, and whatever that number is, is your recommended protein for the day. And think about it, make up a chart of proteins from plants and just you don't get overly concerned because a lot of people in the plant-based world will say, if, and it's true, and Brenda Davis will say this, if you eat a varied diet and get enough calories, you don't even have to think about protein because everything has protein, uh, including, for example, for example, broccoli is 35% protein. You get plenty of protein from plants, but if you go off the rails, and aren't eating enough good foods that are varied, you could have some problems there. Is plant protein inferior? No, it has all of the nine essential amino acids um, that will build our body. Um, and they come, well, let me go to this next slide. They come in foods that may not be, um, have all nine essential amino acids, and some do. For example, soy is a complete protein. Quinoa is a complete protein. But you don't have to eat like that. You don't have to have rice and beans to make it a complete protein. If you eat it, your body is going to put together those elements because it breaks them apart when you eat them in the first place and then reconstitutes the essential amino acids. Okay. Protein foods in general the percent of, of protein in these foods, veggie meats are high, but you don't want to get it that way. That's processed and they are isolates. They'll take soil, they'll throw everything away other than the protein, put it in the meat and say, see, we've got a lot of protein for you. You'd be better off eating your soybeans or your tempeh or your tofu. Non-starchy vegetables, 20 to 40%. And if you look down at meats, most meats or the eggs and the milk are even less than that. Actual meats are higher than that, but we don't need that much protein. Grains, eight to 17%, nuts and seeds, eight to seven, and root vegetables and fruits less than that. The fruits are the lowest in the protein, and yet some people eat nothing but fruits and have had healthy lifestyles built on nothing but fruits. I think that's a little restrictive, but that's just my thinking. Okay. Um, fats. What about fats? High fat, whole plant foods like nuts and seeds, avocados, even coconut has a place in our diet, even though coconut oil is, and coconuts are a saturated fat. They're less damaging than the saturated fat from animal products. Concentrated fats and oils, though, should be used sparingly because they are not attached to the fiber. We can have far too many of them, and they're degraded 
by a lot of, of, of um, cooking methods. Leave it at that. Minimize exposure to damaging fat. Do not allow fats to smoke. And yet how many recipes, and I'll just lay this out there. I use no oil in my cooking. If you go to nansimmonson.com, that's my website, you'll see massive amounts of recipes. Better yet, go to YouTube and you'll get the videos and you can see the recipes. Um, you will see how I saute, i putting up air quotes, all of my, we'll call it mirepoix. If you cook, you know that you saute onions and garlic and maybe um, uh, celery and carrots and almost every recipe will say, put a tablespoon, two tablespoons, a quarter of a cup of oil in the pan and heat it up and then saute. Well, when you're heating up to saute like that, you're getting between 350 and 400 um, degrees or more going. That will smoke olive oil. And yet most of those recipes will say, use olive oil. So no, that's not a good strategy. You can do all of that by just using broth and caramelizing and deglazing the pan with just broth. Never cook with the omega-3 rich oils like flax and hemp. You lose the omega-3 and it degrades the oil and causes problems. We can't digest that. Don't um, uh, do not burn high fat foods or blacken them because that creates those advanced glyca uh, like uh, I advanced <laughs> glycolic in end products, which again are carcinogenic. Minimize processed foods, store all high fat foods like your nuts and your seeds in the refrigerator or freezer. What I do is I buy because you can't eat a flax seed and expect it to give you its omega-3 fatty acids. So you buy your flax seeds, I grind enough to keep in a jar in the refrigerator and mix it with chia seeds and that I grind even more than that, but keep that in the freezer. So I've got easy access to the ground part, but that's only for a month or two storage. I hope I'm not confusing you, but I, I thought I'd throw that in while I was thinking about it and avoid fried foods. Fried foods not only use oils that are cheaper oils, loaded with omega-6s, and you'll hear about that, but they are also degraded because they're used again and again at very high temperatures. Fried foods are hideous for our body and yet so hard to not eat because they are, after all, very good and we can get addicted to them. Uh, ALA, that's alpha linoleic acid. That's how we get our omega-3s. We we bring them in and our body converts them to DHA and EPA, not perfectly, but somewhat and good enough. Chia seeds, hemp seeds, flax seeds. Um, the recommendation is to eat walnuts, hemp, chia, and flax. Flax is highest, chia is next, walnuts is the highest of the nuts. I think hemp seeds have too much six, but I'll leave that alone. Um, and use omega-3 rich oils in salad dressings. Well, one omega rich oil is canola oil. I suggest just not even using any oil at all. Remember 4,000 calories a pound and absolutely not necessary and it degrades with heat. So better yet, just get it from the food. Um, if you don't or wonder if you're not getting enough omega-3s because they are good for brain health. There are algae-based omega-3, um, microalgae-based omega-3 products available. I even take one as a backup. Okay, what's the story with omega-3? Okay, essential fatty acids are omega-3, omega-6, and 9. We get 9 in everything, but we don't get 3s in very many things. I just looked at the sources, that's chia, flax, and some from hemp and from walnuts, but we get omega-6s from everything, all of the oils, most, actually most plants, and um, the processed foods are loaded with omega-6s. Well, they will dominate in terms of the enzyme that breaks them down, the threes. So if you have a ratio, it should be a ratio of one to one, omega-3 and omega-6, 
maybe at the most one to three, omega three to omega six. Well, most Americans, most Westerners have a ratio of one to 20, one to 30, way out of balance. That's highly, I'll call it toxic. In other words, it's inflammatory to our body. So that's the big deal with omega threes. That's the big deal in my mind with these oils. All of those oils are helping put you out of balance for your omega-3 fatty acids, which are great for your brain. Okay, how do we fight inflammation? Been talking about it the entire time. Pro-inflammatory offenders are um, excess weight, especially abdominal fat, an unhealthy diet, allergens, alcohol, high sugar, extreme exercise, breaks us down and is inflammatory. Lack of sleep, smoking, pollution, and stress. A lot of what we talk about in lifestyle is medicine in one way or another. The most inflammatory foods, we've looked at that. Fast foods, processed, fried, refined carbohydrates, the high fat um, meats and dairies, uh, trans fats, gluten if you're sensitive, pro-oxidants, and alcohol. The World Health Organization has now declared there is no safe level of alcohol as it relates to, for example, breast cancer. Um, a lot of people still want their glass of wine at night. Uh, the lower the level, the lower the amount, the better we are. Maximize phytochemicals and antioxidants. Fill your plate with a wide variety of colorful plant foods. We've talked about that. Fermented organic is best because then you're keeping a lot of the pesticides out of your food and the herbicides. And um, when you eat raw, you're getting more phytochemicals and enzymes. And that's one of the reasons I would say every day, do what I do. Have a huge salad. You'll see my salad in just a minute. All right. Eat a balanced, healthful diet. Oops, I've got to hurry. All right. Well, we're going to go over, I can tell. And remember, you can watch this recorded. Nutritional inadequacies, such as protein, lack of protein, or inadequacies in the vegetables, um, uh, nutrients from your vegetables and legumes and the rest, will cause problems with conversion enzymes, uh, high fat diets will do that. Trans fats will do that. And so it is important that you do pay attention to getting the combination of healthy plant foods, not letting it drift into the process because then you're actually diminishing your health every time you eat it in all of these ways rather than build it. Okay, now we're getting to the food. <laughs> Again, if you've found yourself, I was going to say in bed with <laughs> processed foods, these foods don't appeal to you. If you have continued to keep your palate tuned to fresh, whole um, uh, variety of plant foods, this uh, picture lights you up because you can just taste how delicious that bell pepper is, how uh, juicy that orange is, how satisfying the silkiness of that avocado is. This is something that I make on a regular basis. And can you have, if you go whole food plant-based, the foods that you love? Heck yes. This is an appetizer, ceviche. These are baked chips. I do that in my air fryer. And this is ceviche made with da, 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 palm hearts, mango, avocado, tomatoes, onions, the phytonutrients of cilantro. You'll find that on my website, my um, actually on my um, YouTube channel as well, the vegan ceviche. Some people say, but I couldn't give up my sandwiches. I couldn't give up my burgers. Well, the one on the left is a black bean burger. What looks like mayo is my vegan sour cream, which is really so silken tofu seasonings and lemon juice. And it is delicious. And yes, that's on my channel. Big fat tomato, onion, pickle. Doesn't get any better than that. On the right, that's no tuna um, salad. 
or no chick salad. And it's just a combination of, in this case, this one is um, uh, chickpeas, delicious. Would you miss tacos? No, when I said that every Sunday we go to this vegan restaurant, this is what we order. This is all the food that we eat in one meal. When you're not getting a lot of fat from things, you can eat a lot of satisfying food. These are low calorie density foods. What's under that pile on the tacos, that's tofu. And it's not fried tofu. So it's just grilled tofu, a citrus slaw over that, a aioli, turmeric aioli over that, which is mainly soy. Up above it is roasted vegetables down below. Those blackened things are um, grilled mushrooms and then um, grilled potatoes. Fabulous meal loaded with plant servings that'll get us easily up to our the numbers that we aim for every day in terms of variety and plant foods. This is a pot roast. No, you don't have to miss pot roasts. We had this for Valentine's Day. That's a portobello pot roast. Absolutely delicious. What about meatloaf? This is a lentil meatloaf. These are on my um, YouTube and my um, uh, um, <laughs> my website. Um, what about sautéed mushrooms? Well, I don't use oil. These are sautéed and dry uh, they're, they're dry sauteed. Um, all of this is on my website and my YouTube. These are mashed potatoes that are not quite half, but almost half cauliflower, mashed potato, and then creamed up with cashews. Absolutely delicious. I serve them to everyone when they come over on lots of garlic. and <laughs> They don't know the difference. You love a stew. This is a beautiful stew loaded with protein because it has beans and delicious broth. Pastas, you won't miss pastas. Tomatoey sauce with beans and parsley. This is a paella. I spent time in Spain and paella you can buy from street corner as well. I make my own paella and I have um, artichoke card in it. This is a bowl and these bowls can be a combination of any food you like cooked or whole. This is quinoa and chickpeas, the other one was raw um, and butternut squash and kale. What it comes down to is the sauce. And we'll talk about sauce a little bit later. This is, it's on my website. This is a spicy Thai curry stir fry with tofu cubes. And I'll show you how I do those without any oil. Just delicious. This is a black bean, a fermented black bean, um, green bean. So it's a a black bean, green bean. I can't remember what I call it, but it's a stir fry um, with shiitake mushrooms. We'll do a pound and a half of these and my husband and I will share them. And then peanuts on top. Taquitos, you don't want to miss the crunch. Well, this is my lentil taco filling with uh, the steamed, I just heat them up in the microwave tortillas. I get organic gluten-free tortillas, wrap it around it, put it in an air fryer. They're crunchy and absolutely delicious. Dip them in a salsa and you have a great appetizer or meal. French fries, just air fry them. Get an air fryer or use your toaster oven or your regular oven. These potatoes are all batch cooked. There's not a lot of cooking in what you see last minute. There, well, there was in a number of those recipes, but I batch cook, you'll see this in a minute, potatoes every week and then squish them down, put them in an air fryer and they're crispy. This is ketchup without sugar or we prefer actually hummus that I make on a weekly basis. These are cheeses. Why am I showing you cheeses? Because I've become a cheese maker. <laughs> I make blue cheese and cheddar cheese and ricotta cheese. Actually, on my website, I have a new cheese for this one up here, the, the upper right-hand corner. That is a ricotta, savory ricotta. And to make it into a heart for Valentine's Day, I just put a beet in it before I word it in the blender and turned it pink. But that's what it looks like if you don't make it pink. Um, we have a couple of loaves of this savory light cheddar. 
um, mainly vegetables with only a quarter cup of cashew in what amounts to three of those loaves. Absolutely delicious. So find those. I'll be this one on the left, the spicy pepper that will go up next week. And then the blue cheese was one of the first I put up. It's just delicious. That's the upper left-hand corner. What does a vegan plate look like? Pretty much like this. Half fruits and vegetables, about a quarter grains, and then about a quarter of your legumes and your seeds and nuts for your healthy fats. What do you eat in a day? Well, I eat a whole grain, like I use oat groats. You could use rolled oats. The soy beverage is high protein, nine grams of protein per cup. That's as much in a cup of milk, a lot of berries, and then flax and chia. I've also lately been going to a savory breakfast so that I put the grains and a little bit of milk and then a bunch of the um, mixed greens that they call um, super super greens. So you can get them at Trader Joe's or Costco, put them in the freezer in those giant bags and then just grab out a handful, crunch them up in a bowl. And they cook down to a really savory uh, meal because I add some miso to that. And it's like a miso soup with greens. I like greens in the morning now. Uh, pancakes, I've got recipes for that. Muffins, cereals made of granolas. Now, the one thing I'd take out of that picture is right there. Forget the orange juice, eat the orange. This is Tim's daily lunch. There's his potato. There's part of my chopped salad down below that. Two open-faced slices of avocado toast a whole avocado, slice of red onion, tomato, sprouts, and then lettuce, um, crudités, and apple. He eats all of that. And this is my chopped salad with a bunch of things on top of it, like the sweet potatoes, the purple sweet potatoes. Um, I think that the orange was peaches and carrot and um, tiny bell peppers, just on and on of color over a base of chopped greens. We do this for lunch or for dinner off and on where we'll just have a bowl. That's carrot salad, jicama, a black bean and corn um, uh, salad. Um, those are red bell peppers, green sugar snap peas and roasted uh, sweet potatoes. This will be our meal. Lots of food, lots of color, lots of flavor. We make them best and more palatable for everyone with sauces. Sauces like this is my um, ranch, my creamy ranch dressing that uses a potato as the base of it. This is my, um, it's AJ's um, house dressing or my house dressing. You can find that under dressings on the website. And then this is the tofu. If you've got dressings to put on things or extra fake flavor like vegan Parmesan, I believe I have that recipe up and you could find that anywhere online. Some of them use nuts. They'll use the uh, nutritional yeast and nuts ground up together. Some like Chef AJ only uses nutritional yeast, a seasoning and um, oats. This is the hummus that I make from Angela or from, um, yeah, Angela Davis's or Brenda Davis's cookbook. Um, batch cooking. I batch cook every week. I do a sweet potato, a white one called a Hannah yam and a purple one. Tim's potatoes are batch cooked every week, all of that for the week. And then I just pull them out and smash them. Above that is oat groats. This is oat groats and uh, quinoa, the mixed quinoa. I even make big pots of chickpeas and freeze them. I'll freeze them loose, kind of loosen them up and then put them in one quart bags. How do I make my broths? Well, they're organic because my vegetables are, and I keep putting vegetable scraps in this bag, in the freezer, when it's full, just did this yesterday, throw it into a pot, boil it. That one quart will make me about, or that one bag will make me about four to five quarts of broth. 
And then from that broth, making soups, using it to make, for example, this is the lentil taco mixture that's on my site. And this is the um, tofu that I so easily brown in a non-stick pot, throw over sesame seeds, and then a little bit of either tamari or um, coconut aminos. Brown it up and keep that in the refrigerator or use it for any given meal. Roasting vegetable adds, vegetables adds a lot of flavor. These are portobello mushrooms. Once they're roasted, they can be eaten on the spot with mashed potatoes and vegetables uh, like steamed broccoli or put into a sandwich. You can make your own flatbreads. I have recipes for that as well. Your own whole grain muffins without animal product or oil or sugar. None of my recipes have sugar because they use usually, if I'm gonna sweeten it, date paste like this one. Applesauce, um, bananas and um, oats all are what went into this. And even this is just bananas and cherries um, for what we call ice or nice cream. Looks like a pumpkin pie, it's not. It's a sweet potato pie, absolutely delicious. So you don't have to miss anything. Even when you go out, there's Tim with his glass of wine. He still likes a glass of wine from time to time with a meal. We were out to dinner in England and we found exactly what we wanted, a delicious whole food plant-based meal. People are fed by the food industry that pays no attention to health and are treated by the health industry which pays no attention to food. Ask your doctor. When I started my, before my plant-based journey, which I started because my health was become, going badly, um, high cholesterol, uh, saw a cardiologist. He says it has nothing more than 20% to do with food, if even that. Um, high blood sugar, endocrinologist said food's not gonna change it. Insane. This is T. Colin Campbell. Never before has whole, whole food plant-based diet been so easy to implement. Never before has it been so tasty, convenient, cheap, and fulfilling. And these are some of the references I want to give you. Books to read, people to follow. You can go back and look at this, take screenshot. These are some of the documentaries. Start with Forks Over Knives, The Game Changers. Have your spouse if you've got a people digging in their heels because that shows that he men can eat just plants some of these get really gnarly if you get into earthlings and cowspiracy um, but maybe that's not a bad thing if we understand what this industry is like it's a little easier to say i'm not going to be part of it if you want to start simply this is dr neil barnard's the vegan starter kit you can get this on amazon and then a reminder, or maybe a notice to you, that I have on my YouTube channel back from July of last year, a challenge that I gave. I'm not giving that same challenge, but I have short videos on each of these subjects. Love more is community, sleep well, keep moving, stay calm. That is stress management, be present. Um, that's partially purpose eat more plants. And then you'll get on my website, a six pillars of uh, uh, health um, challenge that's written up with notes for each of these. So you can find these resources. I'll end by saying we have options. We can live on the left of this page and get the right of this page. If we live with foods that our body loves. If we love the food that loves us back, we can go into old age and know our grandkids into our 80s, 90s, and beyond. We can run through a cemetery rather than live in one. If we eat the foods that don't like us, that poison us, that cause the antioxidants, that diminish us, we're looking at disease, we're looking at procedures and pills, and we're looking at an early grave. It's up to you. It used to be the norm that people smoked. Now it's forbidden in most places. It used to be the norm 
that people ate like this, we can make a decision that this is the way people eat and live. I want to say goodbye, but I'll go to, um, we'll take off mute. But I want to recommend that we look at our lives and say, I'm going to age powerfully. I want vibrant health. I want balance. I want joy.